You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the 8% Nation podcast, where this podcast is dedicated to helping you as an insurance uh, industry producer or individual be in the 8%, which is 92% of insurance agents fail. James, what does that mean to you? What does that statistic mean to you? 92% of the people in our industry fail. What's that about? It means Cody's not talking to enough people yet, right? <laughs> I'm not putting out enough content. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dude, best dressed in the middle. That's, that's how we do with this, right? So today it's you, man. You always make me feel silly. By a lot. You don't have a pocket square or anything over there. Yes, he does. Oh, you do? Gosh dang it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't wear the bow tie. Though. That's true. That's true. No bow tie. No well, bow we tie. have a very special episode today. We have Mr. James Whitley of SLS. Um, James, would you mind just uh, telling the people who you are, your background a little bit, and then we'll just get into just kind of talking some shop, man. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been with SLS for 10 years, uh, but... I went to, I grew up, probably how most of us did, um, I grew up where my da- my parents instilled in me at a young age, you know, you need to go to school, you need to get good grades, you need to go to college, you need to get a good degree, work for a good company, work there for 30 years and, and get a pension and retire. And, and that was always instilled in me. Um, so I did my best to do that. Um, I got into University of Florida, uh, go Gators, and uh, <laughs> got it. That. Yeah, and uh, you got to, and um, got. Uh, I got a degree in finance. I always wanted to work on on Wall Street. Wall Street was one of my favorite movies, and I was going to move to New York and work my way up the corporate ladder and and take over the world. Jordan Belfort um, beat you to the punch, bro. He did, and uh, <laughs> and um, subprime mortgages beat me to the punch, and so I gra- I graduated in in two thousand and eight, uh, and the job I had lined up from a uh, internship in 2007, no longer on the table. The guys that offered me the job no longer had jobs. Wall Street was collapsing. New York was a disaster. So in hindsight, that was the best thing that could happen to me because I didn't move there. I didn't get invested in stuff. I didn't, you know, have, you know, all this overhead. And so I moved back home with my parents and and I was trying to figure out um, a way to be successful. And I was bouncing around from jobs and the market kept getting worse. Uh, working at banks, I worked for uh, Marriott. I, I did you know everything under the sun. Got my real estate license, mm. and so I finally woke up one day after a couple different iterations of that, and said the next person that was going to fire myself was going to be me. And my best friend in college, uh, Grant Dockerty, shout out Grant, couldn't be here today, but uh, his dad owned and ran SLS, and he said that the recession had been the best thing that ever happened to him, right? It was the best couple of years he'd had because a bunch of people that thought they were too good for insurance made the transition and, and came over and the majority of our clients are on a fixed income. Mm-hmm. So uh, fast forward to then and, and I moved to Vero Beach on a whim and the rest is history. So um, Grant and I took on the task of trying to figure out how to do what his dad had. His dad was, was wildly successful at field sales and uh, his dad gave us the task. He put us in a literally a closet half the size of the studio and asked us to figure out how to do it over the phone. Um, and that was in 2009. And today, I get to sit with you two. So. Right on. Well, hey, just so, because some people don't know how big of a deal you are. With, it, with, as, mi- with as much you know, that you can share, walk me through like the size of your organization, maybe the employee count or I know you just walk us through kind of the scope of what you guys operate over there because it's, it's a spectacle. We went and saw you guys. So SLS has it, it's a uh, unique operation in the fact that we have 32, I think at the moment, um, full-time staff members. Uh, so they're not in sales wow. uh, and their entire job is customer service, uh, servicing new business, um, you know, checking policies, commissions um, and accounting. Um, we have live receptionists to answer the phone for all of our clients, you know, the whole time. We have our own in-house lead department. So everything is being done from an agency perspective so that our, I think we're at around 250 uh, sales agents can do one thing and, and one thing only, and that's uh, go out and, and sell insurance. So we've got around 200 uh, field agents um, and then uh, 50 uh, currently in the call center uh, doing telesales. Are you able to give us any numbers on just production? Uh, SLS 
did over 25 million uh, last year, and we're on pace to, to exceed that. Um, but you know, our, our goal, as we talked about before, our goal is is to get to 100 million um, and to do it as quickly as possible. Dude, thinking big early on the podcast, I like it. Well, well Dallas in Dallas, an eight percent helped me think big, help me think bigger. So, and, and Grant and I, you know, spend a lot of time talking about that and seeing that mm. and realizing. Um, you guys say it all the time on here that you know uh, this is the time to, to oh, be yeah. in the insurance industry. So time I love to strike. it. Well, you you seem to say a lot about eight percent, man, and it's unsolicited in terms of seem to have really opened your eyes. What specifically, man, clicked with you? I'm interested to hear that perspective because I mean you're not a guy that typically. I mean I consider you like a monster that kind of has it figured out. You know, I mean I know you. I, I, I do not have anything figured out. I feel like I'm just <laughs> just trying to figure it out and. And I've spent successful people always feel that way, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and, and it is, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people out there way bigger than me. And, um, you know, uh, I've always looked to, to, uh, Rory, um, and, and Grant and I, and that's Grant's father. We always look to him. I mean, he's, he's my mentor and I'm trying to figure out how to do what he did, but then understanding that, that we could potentially take everything he's taught us and, and take it to the next level. So I spent, trying to figure out how to sell on the phone. Not a lot of people were doing it in 2009. That was kind of the, the early years of any type of phone sales. And uh, I guess outside of Jordan Belfort. <laughs> and um, yeah. so I would just watch YouTube videos. And so I watched a lot of Cardone stuff early on and I got plugged into to 10X stuff and him selling on the phone. And so I've, I've told Cody this before, I, I watched probably two years worth of, of Cody's videos before and I'm, I'm like the creeper. I don't ever like like or comment on anything. <laughs> uh, and I'm in all the forums and I do all this stuff, but I would watch his videos and do all this. And so I heard about 8% didn't go to the first one, but uh, we got a chance to meet in person and, um, you know, just 10 X three. I was yep. going to say, where'd you two meet? Was we, that what it was? We met at 10 X. Yep. Three um, in Miami. And I wasn't supposed to go to that. Lauren and I were at another conference I was speaking at and being a vendor at, and we took a red eye overnight just to be at day three, or we may Still not a met. Yeah. And uh, so in that creepy, I guess, stalker fashion, um, I saw him and was like, oh, that's, that's good. It was Cody Askins. And, and he doesn't know who I am, but, you know, I went over and, and we started talking. And uh, so, you know, this industry. I had seen their stuff. They just didn't know it. I had. Yeah, there you go. See? So what, 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 have you, what have you seen? Uh, I had seen Grant and, and, and James both. Both. Uh, just through Instagram, through Bert, maybe, you know, just, just through. Oh yeah, that's right. Some people online, you just kind of like, you don't talk, like I'm the same way. I don't, you know, I'm not one to like comment on everybody's posts. There's other people that are way better at that, but I'm always, you know, I'm looking and looking for ways to improve and find, you know, look, looking to learn from other people. And yeah, I, I, I recognize you guys too. Yeah. You, you didn't know it then, but. Yeah. And in, in this industry, you know, that we get a bad rap. Um, we in is in the industry. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot of unethical stuff that, that happens and, and unethical organizations or people. And, and so I've always been very reserved in, in making those relationships. So the reason I, I say 8% a lot is just because that was the first time where I was able to go somewhere. And, and, you know, you guys did a great job of marketing that, that this wasn't a recruiting event. This wasn't a try and, and get business or do this. And it truly was just an, an industry event. So that was the first time that I'd really stepped outside of our little nest yeah. uh, that was SLS to, to do that. But, you know, I always believe I can learn, you know, a lot from others. That's cool, man. Yeah, no, it's that's really awesome. Cool. That's awesome. So, um, I mean, is, is there anything, you know, if you could give a lot of, a lot of our audiences younger in general, we have a younger audience demographic. Um, is there anything you could do to encourage those younger sort of producers out there that are trying to potentially think about getting in the industry or anything like that? I mean, is there anything you could kind of do if, if, if you were, if you heard this piece of advice when you were 22 or three or four, you would it would have changed your perception? Like, is there anything to that? Um, so I, I was 22 when I started in the industry, and I would not be sitting here today if I just went and got my license and tried to go sell. Um, you know, without uh, Rory and, and the mentorship there and the structure and you know having you know Grant to lean on and all that. So I, I think. I guess the best way to say it is you've got to be able to find, you know, partners and mentors and people that you can really trust um, in order to do that. Ramiz said the same thing. I was thinking he was weird. going there. I'm it's sitting over here thinking of the Lord mentor and like finding good people and learning from people. And well, even, and that's even where you, you went right, with your with your dad. Exactly. 
exactly. Yep. Someone to lean on, someone to learn from. Bradley asked me that on his podcast and dropping bombs and said, uh, you know, uh, w- w- you know, did, was your dad a help? You know, did you learn from him? And I'm like, absolutely. And, and that's still the first person I go. I mean, he's, he's a father figure to me and that's the first person I still go to, you know, if I have questions about this, I mean, he, he never sold a policy on the phone, but he still knows more about this industry than, than anybody I've ever met. So most people are ashamed to admit that other people are helping them too. I don't know why that's a thing, but it's a thing. People are like, it's almost like it de credibilizes them. You know, that's not even a word, but you see where I'm going. Like that, that someone helped me get where I am. It's like, Dude, every successful person ever had someone help them get somewhere. So it's, it's all, and, and successful people are more likely to admit it. It's, it's really unique. You know, some people, a lot of people just, they're like, oh, that's, that's, I did it. It's me. You know, and they're like, I'm not going to let anybody share in that and not give anybody credit. And, you know, but I, I love hearing people do that. Well, especially if 92% of people aren't in it. You know, if you can find one of those 8% yeah. and uh, learn from them. Um, and we've been able to accomplish in, you know, half the time what uh, Rory was able to accomplish. And now we're helping that next generation accomplish it in half the time that I did it, wow. you know? So there's gonna be somebody comes at SLS that, you know, is, is able to do what Grant and I are able to do at, at, you know, 26 instead of 33, so. That's what, if any, if, and, and you bring up a super good point that if anyone's out there like struggling, you have to plug in and find someone yeah. that can help you, right? You, you, you you can't, you really honestly cannot succeed on your own. You just can't. You're the second person like, too today that said, we typically don't work well with people that are contract chasing. You know what I mean? And just chasing the higher contract. Remiz said the same exact thing. They both said the same exact thing. It's weird how successful people kind of think alike, you know? So interesting. And that's the, the that's most of our industry now. It's just flashy and, you know, um, even though it's super old fashioned and, you know, there's the things that matter, you know, or the people think matter aren't, aren't as important. You know, it's like majority of people fail, you know, let's just make, make some freaking money. Well, and, and you see, um, and you guys have, have seen the inside of, of our organization. So you see how much money is going into that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't, it's a, it's I don't make enough money to pay for that. How, right? how, 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 many, how many square feet is that? That's a couple stories. 23,000. 23,000. It's beautiful, too. Thou. It's and beautiful, too. It's not Plus. just like a random little warehouse. Right. It's beautiful. And so it wouldn't have mattered what contract level at 22 I would have gotten. I couldn't have afforded to, to invest what he invested to get, you know, the, the call center up and running, to get the leads where we needed to get it, to get, you know, the, the just equipment and training and, and product knowledge and all the things that, that he brought in industry experience. Um, it, it wouldn't have mattered. You could have paid me a thousand percent. You know, I, I couldn't have afforded that. So. You know, mm. to have that and have what he, you know, what he did, you know, for us. And then to the same token, if I had just been by myself on those bad days, we were talking to the, the your sales team earlier and it's the same thing. It's like if, if I'm just sitting there alone and I have nobody to bounce that stuff off of, like it can, you can get in a dark place <laughs> really fast. Yeah. You know, and so it helped the competitive nature help, but also just being able to be there and, and have just early honors as Grant and I and, and having Grant to, to lean on. And if Grant had a good day, at least I was like, okay, at least somebody made a sale and, and vice yep. versa. And, and we were able to, to it's, it's role, possible. role play with each other and do all that stuff and, and hear something on the call and say, hey, you know, let me, you know, uh, it's like that commercial. Um, let me talk to your supervisor and like switch. The, this is Peggy, you know, like, you know, and so like, Grant and I could do that too and stuff. So like, you know, him and I, <laughs> He's got strengths and weaknesses that, that are opposite of mine, and we work really well together, and, and Rory and all his stuff. So, you know, that's that's always what I say is you got to find somebody that if, if, you know, if I could be Rory when I grow up, I'm going to be a pretty happy guy. And so if you can find that and, and be willing to, to mm. let that person, you know, mentor you and teach you and, and help you grow. So that telesales center, 23,000 square feet, you got 32 employees. Um, how many callers do you guys have? 50. 50. And then it, I think it just now clicked with me. I don't think it really did. Am I understanding that you and Grant built that call center? Basically, you and Grant did that? Yes. Dude, I don't think I even really realized that. I kind of was like, oh, I guess Rory and Grant. And I kind of was like, okay, I guess James was kind of like a producer and then kind of came up. But it's just now clicking that you and Grant built that. But by learning how to do it themselves. That's incredible. Yeah, by, by being thrown into it. Dude. Know, I don't know if Grant out of college would have, would have gone right into sales and... Um, and I certainly would have if he hadn't. So it was one of those things where him and I were like, are we going to do this? And I was like, all right, let's do it. And we, and we went all in, you know, that's awesome. we burned the bridge. You know, I, I 
packed up, drove home, had nowhere else to go, and, and had to go down there and, and make it happen. And, That's uh, awesome. I kind of always assumed like there was something there and you kind of like worked through the system and then kind of took it over. But it sounds like you built it from nothing. Well, but we had we well, had, you had Rory's infrastructure from the field sales perspective, right. but on the tele sales, there was nothing there. Yeah, dude. It's impressive. It's what, really cool. How about this? And Cody, cut me off, man, because I'm just interested in these conversations a lot. So if I jump in with too many questions, just let me know. Man. No, no, you're good, man. But I'm I'm in like an entrepreneur. You and I are. We're all entrepreneurs totally. here. Right. And I love to understand what I feel like. It's one thing to look at. To go from 25 million to 100 million is, is, is you know, one thing, and it's super difficult, obviously. But going from zero million and no telesales to building your, just you and Grant in a room, right, doing telesales, mm -hmm. to a team of 50, how did, how did you make that jump for the first, like, five telesales hires? How, how did you, like, because at, at some point you're like, all right, Grant, you and me aren't going to be on the phones 100% all the time anymore. Right. How, how'd you make that jump? Yeah, we're not going to do, yeah. And when was that? Is this 2012, 11? Yeah, to, I think 2012 was where we really hit hit our stride. Um, and again, going back to you've got to have somebody that's willing to invest in, in you and support you, right? Because, I mean, you guys talk to a lot more uh, agents and stuff. And, and to make that transition from a solopreneur to, all right, now I'm going to be responsible for these people. Um, and I still have to pay my bills. And now I have to pay for, for their marketing and their this and, and the overhead and all that and, and keep mm -hmm. everybody afloat. Mm -hmm you will take a hit, right? You will take a, a massive hit in, in uh, your income and you have to be willing to do that to invest in them. So A, him and I were willing to do that. B, we had his dad behind us who was who was fronting the, the support and the marketing and, and all that. But we got very fortunate, you know, we're, um, you know, we, we have a saying that we're not in the insurance business, we're in the people business. Yep. And that goes in sales, right? When we're talking to our clients, you know, we're selling ourselves and we're making a connection and we're doing all that. But it also was really strong in the recruiting side. You know, we didn't like all of a sudden just say, all right, we're going to turn on Monster or Indeed or ZipRecruiter. Um, you know, Facebook was a really a recruiting tool then. Um, and so it was a, a word of mouth thing. And so by building those relationships and doing that, you know, we got very fortunate that, you know, we found some some key people. Um, you guys got a chance to meet uh, and, and they are now our, our team builders who, you know, um, we edify them. They edify us and, and they eat, breathe, sleep and and live the SLS, you know, system lifestyle. So they're they're able to go out and and. Uh, Kind of, you just see so that you, you, the circles grow. So you organically found two or three callers to sit next to you, and then two or three turned into 10, and then 10 turned into 20. Is that kind of it? Yeah. I mean, you, you find people that, you know, aren't happy where they're at or, 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 you know, they have a good personality. They've got a work ethic. They're looking for a better opportunity. And um, when there's just one person sitting there, you, you know, you got to make sure they're successful. And, yep. and I think that's what we did a really good job at is, is caring about them as people and trying to get them to be successful. And so that's just become duplicatable to a degree. You got to, you got to figure out a way to duplicate yourself. So and we, it, yeah, it's really neat that you, you guys, especially for your in-house uh, call center, it, it's only, it's not people that have been in the business before. Right. Um, one lady's, you know, working at KFC and struggling and now, earning six figures, you know, it's like, that's the power of our industry and what's available. And it's just a man, when you hear that, and I heard her story that day and she, she comes was, in there, oh, dude. oh she came it makes in you cry almost, dude, it does. Like, it was no, like, it, really does. it was like, I was like getting goosebumps. She was standing there telling it. And, and I'm like, gosh, I, and we were talking about how that needs to be on video. You know, I'm like, that is freaking cool. And, and, and we're really lucky. I mean, Grant and I always say that, I mean, we found some really incredible people, you know, and, and like I said, this industry, you can find some people that aren't that way and, and I don't mind. I mean, a lot of the people we found are way better salespeople than I ever was. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can, I can outwork somebody to try and get to, to where I need to get to, but you know, we, we found some people that just have it and it clicks and, and, um, and it's, it's awesome. So. So, well, something that was super unique at your guys' office was the, uh, the culture, you know, uh, I don't think culture is something that you can just, you know, teach or train on. It's like, it just, you know, it, it takes time and it takes some attention and, you know, the, the things you guys were doing, giving out tons of cash every morning and like hyping people up. And like, I was freaking ready to get on the phones for an entire 48 hours in a row. I mean, I was just so jacked up, you know, it's like, what, what, what are some things that you can do for like someone out there trying to build a team, build an agency, build an office, 
help people grow um, from like a cult. We talked about this in the car from a culture perspective, from a, you know, team perspective. Like you guys have just done such a good job from a culture, motivation, inspiration standpoint. Thank you. I, I, you know, again, having a system that we could plug into, you know, I go back to what you said. Yeah, we were the first two to, to sell over the phone. But there was already a culture there. There was already that. I mean, um, the owner, you know, of, of our agency, he walks through the call center pretty much every day, you know, and high fives people and, and checks on people and he'll put money up on the board and all that. So he was doing that when there was just Grant and I, you know, so he was the one giving money. That's he was awesome. the one incentivized. Like, I have not he met him yet. I got to meet this guy. Working, working with us on that. And again, I just... I wanted to emulate everything that he was doing That's awesome. because why, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? It was working in this way, it'll work here. And so a lot of that stuff came from him and, and how he taught us. And like I said, to this day, he still does that. He doesn't need to, he doesn't even need to show up, you know, if he didn't want to. And he does, he comes in, you know, every day. Um, he knows everybody's name. He knows all their numbers. He knows what they did, what they're on track for, even better than I do sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, we've made our own tweaks, you know, here and there. Uh, but. You know, it, it's truly about caring about, you know, people. We've, I mean, some of the stories I, I won't say in here, but we've talked about some of the things that, that Grant and I have done for, you know, our, our agents and the agencies so that it's it's truly a family. And, and you mm. can ask anybody there, and, and we are a family. It's not just show up, make sales, make money, go home. It's like, you know, if, uh, you know, we had the hurricane recently and they just canceled school for the week and people still had to make money. So, you know, we had, you know, the conference room we were going to put movies on in there and have snacks in there and, and let the kids come in there and do whatever we had to do to make it work and we and i know most of the kids names um and they know mine and we got dum-dums in the i mean just little things like that that's a super good point because and i don't know what it is and and i'm guilty of this too of being so focused on like rules and regulations and no your kid can't come to work and holy crap, you better not be a minute late. And you can almost be wrapped in up in all the negativity instead of just like looking at, hey, let's just create a freaking solution and watch the kids while you guys go make some money, you know. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but like that's that's awesome, man. freaking cool. And that, and that wasn't me. That was a big paradigm shift. I came from corporate America where, you know, like you said, I mean, there was, you know, the, all these protocols you had to hit through and go through and, and all this stuff mm -hmm. and um to see you know that and, and to see it firsthand and like i said to go to a meeting with 200 people in the room and you know the owner's just walking around sitting down talking to, when we go on on our incentive trips you know he stays in the same hotel we do he's not like at some exclusive like house down the road and you don't see him except for you know on stage and security with him off you know he's sitting there at the pool you know, this bathing suit just like talking to you about your, your family and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I was very fortunate to learn from somebody that, that did it that way. And, and you get fierce loyalty and, and you get people that, that enjoy what they do every day. So. We, we, we talk, and I say this a lot, but we, we talk to, you know, insurance producers all day long. And what I thought was so interesting whenever Cody and I came out to see you guys and hung out with you and Grant, you know, we had dinner. It was a great dinner. We spent two hours and all you guys talked about was your people, 100%. Hmm. You told me story after story of the, you know, people that you've like literally helped come out of Detroit with no opportunity, relocated them, helped them get relocated. Because I've been in those situations, Cody and I, you know, we, we run in circles where we've been in th those types of situations. And you know what we always hear? My business is so big and let me just I'm so amazing. I've got so much oh my gosh. Like let me tell you so about, much money. Let me tell you about this new thing I figured out to get an extra, you know, twenty grand a month and I figured out this way to get in the middle of this deal and I'm like I'm like ah, whatever. I mean I, that's fine. I like making money too. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like I, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I thought it was interesting that when all the guards were down and we were all just talking, all you and Grant did for two hours was talk about your people. You know, why is that? Story after story yeah. after person well, you after got it. person. You got it. Have you ever thought about why you guys are like that? Because that's a perfect opportunity because Mr. Cody's celebrity over here, everybody knows him. If there's ever a time yeah. where people kind of want to like, you know, kind of like put their shoulders back and talk about what they've accomplished, it's that. And you guys did the opposite. Why? Because that's how we feel. I mean, I wouldn't, I would be nowhere without 
those those people that we've surrounded ourselves with. I mean, I'm very lucky and, and blessed to, to be surrounded with, um, and they know who they are if they're, if they're watching. Uh, I know that I can be here working with you guys on things that are going to make us better as an agency, but I know that the world isn't coming to an end down there, right? Yeah. And, you know, we have, you know, I've had Thanksgiving, you know, had people over for Thanksgiving to my house and done all that. Like, we're just very close. You know, I know everything about, you know, their family and all that. And so that's what I said, they, they are a family. And so I guess I, I make the comparison. I don't know if they'll appreciate this, but it's like, I have, you know, I have a two and a half year old now. And so you know this. And, and <laughs> so you're, you're calling him like your two and a half year old. But I'm saying, <laughs> I, I never understood when you'd meet, like when my friends would have kids and like you'd be with them and all they talk about is their kids. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care that, that, you know, they painted their first son, you know, and like, you know, could count to five for the first time. Like, I don't know why that matters to me. And now I have a two and a half year old and like all I do is talk about him, right? Like J5, like I just talk about everything with him, right? I gotta talk about him all day long. And it's no different with, with them, right? The, the, that That's what I mean by that. Like they, they are a family. So like, if I'm gonna, like that's why we're successful because of the, you know, from Detroit and uh, KFC and Haiti and, and some of the people we have. I mean, their stories are incredible. It's way cooler than mine. And know? so the why is just their family and you, you've always looked at them like that and you feel like that leadership has been modeled from the top? Yeah, because I guess whenever you ask Rory the same thing, if, if you guys have a chance to meet him, he's going to tell you about all the, the, how lucky he was to find this person and this person and, and this and all that. And I don't think he sees it as, as he is some savant. I think he sees it as the right connections with the right people at the right time um hmm. you know because there's never been some big marketing blitz that, that we've ever done i mean almost all of our growth i think has always been organic and and this person came here because of this person and that and it's you know it's like legacies in college or, or something like that you know it, it it's really cool how it how it happens so and and i feel like we could just feel that in your meeting whenever cody and i win we were part of your morning oh, meeting. dude we were touching on culture it's like it talks cheap but when you walk in to the actual meeting that's a kickoff and everyone's like having fun and shouting and I mean the the typical you know Dude, all kinds of shouting too <laughs> like I loved it I loved it well I mean you know you hear well call center it's a high turnover just part of the nature of the beast and yeah there's and everybody hates sure each all, other and it's I'm sure there's some turnover but like you didn't feel that you no. know and and I don't know did you say today that the telemarketing a call center job is like one of the top five employable jobs in the country right now did you say that today i, I, I heard that from somewhere. somewhere there's like more telemarketers in this country than almost any other i could see that yeah you know, so well, if you count customer service and all that stuff but and know, they want to take that away yeah and i mean the 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 culture and all that stuff is why i mean i don't think and, and maybe this is where it comes from we don't lose 92 percent of the people yep. that come in mm. you know um we're probably I've never tracked it hard, but I, I'd say we're north of 50 um, as far as, as bringing somebody in and, and having them, you know, stay long term with us. And well, it's not because, although maybe now that we work with you, it will be. It's not because we have the Glen Gary leads, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's not because like the the script is is some, you know, I rubbed a lamp and a genie came out and gave me the best script ever and we can just sell everybody. You know, the, at the end of the day, everybody's doing the same thing, you know, and I, and I hate to, to dumb it down that much. And that's why I say when you say, what, what should somebody young do? We're all doing the same thing. So you're not going to get some magic script. You're not going to get some magic leads. You're going to do this. But like we've grown to where we have because of, of that culture and because of that belief in that family. And because if somebody's down, five people are going to come help pick them up, you know, and, and you're never going to see anybody and you guys got to walk through and see there mm -hmm. somebody just sitting there struggling through a presentation and and just having people just sit back and do nothing you know everybody's gonna you know be able to jump in through their headset and, and whisper to them and help them or stand over their shoulder or walk them through it or or be peggy and get on the phone and, and help them and do all that so that's why a, a brand new agent who's you know scared it's like learning how to drive right you've got dad right there just being like it's okay good job buddy like all right let's try it again and then all of a sudden it just becomes you know second nature so well what i think is interesting are you able to share what percentage of your business is field versus telesales or is that private like uh we're currently about a, a third um a third of of the ap is from the call center and okay. two-thirds okay. is field 
um, which is incredible. And then, so you're like one of the only organizations I know about that have a very successful field force and a very successful telesales operations. You know, people would say specialize or what, you know, some people look at that as like crazy. Like what, I know, I understand the story and kind of why and how it grew up, but why, why, you know, is it just a product of chance and opportunity or? It's normally one or the other, yeah, typically. We yeah, see. It's, it's interesting to me. I think because, you know, like you said, Grant and I came in with a specific mission is figure out how to make this work. And we did, but, you know, the traditional door-to-door sales is still the majority of, of sales made in, in insurance is that way. And so if you've got a large majority of people who are very successful, doing well, making good money, established doing yeah. that, why try and take them out of that and, and yeah. put them into something else? And it's not, you know, this this isn't one size fits all. And, and you mm. feel all questions all the time. Hmm. Somebody that, you know, uh, is I, at 22, I would not have been, as, uh, Cody was able to do it. I, my tall, goofy self, and I was overweight and all this stuff. I, you know, if I was walking around, just knocking, I didn't have the structure or, or the, yeah all that stuff to pro- I probably would have washed out pretty fast. And so I think I was better at that and learning how to be, I could be whoever I wanted to be at 22 on the phone, but there are some people who the voice inflection may not be there, right? And so they're better in person because they can use their hands and they can use their facial expressions and they can touch somebody and, and use stuff from around there and, and their warmth and connection comes through there. And so, you know, I think you, you're you able to find what, what works for, for everybody. Cool. That way. Yeah, because I try to, you know, sometimes like Cody and I have been do, interviewing a lot of people and talking a lot about telesales. I'm not exactly sure why, but <laughs> um, that's kind of been the theme. And we're also getting a lot of demand of telesales, but, you know, field of, you know field sales is just hugely successful, wildly successful. So I want to make sure that I take a moment to let you know that I'm not ever, you know, promoting, you know, telesales over field sales, and they're still very successful and all that. And so I got a comment the other day that's like, what, what does field sales dead? I'm like, dude, of course not. You know no, and, I mean? and, and our number one like our, our record for the most sales in a week and the most sales in a month and the most sales in a year are all still held by and, and you've seen some of the numbers our call centers put yeah, up yeah. Um, all still held by uh active you know field agents that we have wow um and that didn't surprise me it really doesn't why is that cody <laughs> yeah i think it's easier I think it's easier to succeed in the field too. I just do, especially for most people. I, I think you have to work harder at telesales. If you put 13 hours a day and you're structured and you have your appointments and you have all that stuff and you work the referrals and you know the neighborhood and you do all that stuff, and that's what um, uh, one of our field reps did when he said, he put it out there. He said, "Next week, I'm setting myself up. I'm going to go break the record." And what would he have to do to break it? Um, like forty, like, like a bunch of appointments, or yeah, seven days and and you know appointments from you know eight until whatever, and then working the the referral system. You know, wow. um, we, probably we, like sixty, seventy. We do appointments. we do a lot of, of referral sales, and so being able to get um, something we call instant set of referrals, you know, to where you you're going to get the client to call that person, and then you're doesn't matter you have another appointment, you're driving right to there to do that. Uh, you're able to get more people in the home and. Mm. Um, so like you said, I mean, you're if you're good at setting appointments, you know what your no-show radar is, you know what you can do and, and door knock and, you know, work the street and do all that stuff, you're going to be able to make more presentations than 13 hours of, of being on the phone because you've got to go through a lot more people to get people to answer. So. Oh, is, yeah. the, uh, is the secret sauce uh, referral system, can you walk us through that or is that proprietary? That, that's unique from an I'm instantly going that. to see them. Yeah, I never heard that before. You're the first person that's ever told me that. Because don't you don't you put that over priority on a pre scheduled appointment? I that can't be that proprietary. I mean, if 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 I'm selling Cody, and then you know whatever your referral script is, and then he's like, yeah, my brother, and you're like, okay, let's call your brother, and his brother answers, and Cody says, hey, I just got insurance from this guy. You need it too. We've been we talked about this the other day. What what would be more valuable time spent? Than to go talk to his brother right True. There. So you're so you're skipping an appointment if it's on the schedule and driving across town. It's a lot easier to just call somebody and say I'm running late, right? It's true. Interesting. 
That's I mean, I mean, somebody will probably get mad at me for that, but I don't think that's that. Ah. That's that. Uh, you know, mind blowing to think about. We that. still don't have our knowledge bomb button, Cody. The, if, if even if they, <sighs> do, yeah, even if they do get mad, they're not sitting there, so. <laughs> And they'll, they'll get mad at me about something at some point. So <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> and I, I try to please everybody, but you can't, you know. And, but what you're saying is unique because um, – and I see the importance too because you already helped their family member. They're, it's instantly on their mind. You know, you don't know the other person yet, but it's a warm introduction. Uh, the appointment can, you know, unless you're just bad on the phone, you can reschedule it for a few hours, you know, you know. A client wants me to help one of their family members and I'm going to be here a little longer than I expected. Like that's not a hard call, you know. And, and it's no different than from, from a telesales perspective. You know, we get it a lot where walk in and, and say, what, you're not on the phone. What's, you're just sitting there. What's going on? Oh, I got, a, I got an appointment um, in 20 minutes. I got a call back in 20 minutes. So I don't want to get stuck on a presentation. And it's just like, how many of your callback appointments actually answer the phone? It's true. Right? So like, if Probably like the, how is the how is a, the best case scenario is I'm on a presentation exactly. and my 2.30 becomes a three and I call and just apologize and there's a good chance they weren't going to answer the phone anyways. Mm. And so, you know, you've got to make sure you're not, you know. I like that. You're not counting your chickens before they hatch, right? I like that. You know, it's, you hear that all the time. You're like, how was the day today? Good? Any sales? Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, got a lot of one contracts guy, you know, out there. He says he wants the 30000 It's $250 a month. Um, and all he needs to do is is have me call him back tonight because, you know, his checkbook's at home. All he needs is a bank account and some money. Right. <laughs> hey, but he's ready. Really. So I, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> screw up calling that person, right? And they get so focused on that. Why you know, do we get do so caught up in the weeds and, like, analysis paralysis? And, like, is it just sometimes we – prioritize dumb stuff to avoid working. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know. I think you nailed it. I was, I was like that too. I, I used to make, uh, if Grant was here, he'd say, I mean, I was the worst at, this was very hard for me to make the transition because my, my father is from um, small coal mining town in Kentucky. And so he's like old fashioned and, and Southern and all this stuff. And so growing up, like telemarketing was such a novel concept because I saw the way he answered the phone and did all that stuff. And it was very hard for me to understand that it wasn't my dad that I was calling. Like I tried to practice on him and he's like, son, I still, you know, he didn't understand why I was yeah. trying to do what I was yeah. doing, but mm. he wasn't, he's not who I was after. And it, it was hard for me to understand that because he took care of life insurance when he was, you know, a lot younger before I was born. You know, he had all that taken care of. We're after people that, you know, are the ostrich, right? They put their head in the sand and just pretend like, they don't have to worry about it. And um, that's why I remind myself all the time that there are more people working in call centers than everywhere else. And, and it wouldn't be that way if it didn't work. Um, but when I first started, I'd still just be like, listen, th this guy, he's, I know he's going to buy. I know this. He just needs to see something, right? So I'm just going to put this. I would spend hours making like Excel spreadsheets and putting numbers in there and like custom typing out a whole letter explaining all this stuff. Put this whole packet together, get some stamps to that. Waste three hours of time, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and go mail this out, you know, thinking that if he just got that and did that. But it's like these people have, have, have known about insurance their whole life. They've talked, I'm probably the 35th person they've talked to yeah. about insurance, you know, and it took me a long time to, I think that's a good tip for people is understanding like, you know, this wasn't some, you know, Cutco knife set, like no yeah. disc to Cutco, they make great knives, but like if somebody knocks on my door selling me knives, 30 seconds ago, I didn't know I needed new knives until he showed me that I could cut through concrete or, or whatever it yeah. was, right? And but, the current ones can't cut a tomato. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> but with, you know, insurance, like I've always known it, right? And it's like, so you're not telling me anything I don't already know. And so there isn't some revelation there. I don't need to, it's not a Kirby vacuum, right? I don't need to, to see the benefits, although it's an important part of the presentation. And that's why, you know, I, I really got everyone to understand that you're really selling yourself because they're going to buy from somebody that they like. And, you know, I don't say this to the client, but we have an expression. It's like, you're 67 and uninsured for a reason. So like we're talking today because you've had 67 years to think about this. You mm. know? So. Hmm. I like that. You said something that triggered something for me too, uh, which was when you're putting together that package, you know, and sending it out to Joe, it's like, 
that is going to be the one, you know, it's like so much time. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's good. You mentioned that. Cause it's like, there's a lot of agents out there sitting there doing that kind of stuff. And it's also in sales, like we just said about how we're looking for reasons not to work, but also we're always looking for the easiest way to make a sale. You know, it's like, okay, well, if I drove leads to this landing page and then they booked themselves and then, oh, by the way, they get an email the next day and then they're going to just fill out the application and, and do the phone interview. How can I get to where I make sales without talking to people? Yeah, you get know? some click wrap sales in there. Yeah. 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 It's like agents are always looking for the, and I, I was probably the worst to this because I was always good at marketing and prospecting. I was like, okay, how can I make 20 grand a week and not talk to anyone? It's like, dude. That is stupid. It doesn't exist. Uh, there's some gurus out there on Facebook right now that'll argue with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're real. They're yeah. real. No, 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 because they're selling you the course to do it. I know. Just, that's how I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting here in Jamaica and I can show you how to do what I'm doing. Oh, oh, oh you're making fun of me, me calling leads in Jamaica. No, I'm no. just kidding. That's what I thought of, though, when you said Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right, though. Seriously. Seriously. Well, and we deal with that all the time where, you know, we use the term buyer intent, and buyer intent is a real term that we can move things up and down. But you get to a certain point where it's ridiculous, where it's like, I only want to talk to this type of person. I want them to go through and answer these 10 questions. And then I want them to book themselves on this calendarly link and all this other stuff. And I'm like, that's fine. I want them to fill out this survey. That's fine. We can do that. We're going to pay $19 a lead and your close rate is not going to go up 2%. You know what I mean? In general. And or it's going to be $190 a lead and you're going to get an extra 3% close rate. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, what, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. It's going to be. If you ever figure it out, then I'm out of a job. Well, there's, that's yeah, what I'm no, saying. Like, yeah. If they sell we, themselves, what do they need me We for? don't need people to <laughs> dial. It's Insurance just, carriers are going to love it, you know. It's interesting where, you know, it, it really, I, I've been saying this a lot. It becomes, to me, block and tackle. And I feel like the guys that can block and tackle just realize that it's just grunt work. Yeah, it's, it's not fun to block and tackle, but that's what wins football games. You know, it's like, mm. it's block and tackle. Like, this is the, the lead game, the marketing game. And then, yeah, there's, there's obviously skill and work ethic. And you got to, you know, understand all the things in the industry and have a mentor and all that. But from a marketing perspective, it typically usually is block and tackle, really. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, That's good. This is good, man. You reminded me, too, of. The, th the things that I would do to avoid just making a call. And this this goes back a long time, but Grant and I, we got just a bunch of old B leads, right? So just direct mail leads that had, hadn't been worked or hadn't been sold. And I remember one day, Grant and I took out a new box. Right? We needed the state we were selling, it was no good, right? It was like, the, nobody in this state buys. I need to go to this state. Yes, yes. So <laughs> we got that state leads out. And we spent all day sorting these by like age, like male, female, like married, unmarried. Oh and gosh. in our minds sold ourselves on like, you know, the <laughs> the 71 year old widow, like in, you know, the the non urbanized sections of Louisiana. Those are the right. So we'd spend I sorted all of them. And then those were the leads I was going to call. I wanted Mary Jones, you know, who yep. whose husband had passed away and yep. like, and we'd sit there and call that and then it'd be, you know, and none of those would sell. And then, you know, eventually you have to call everybody. And then it'd be the, you know, 85 year old married guy in New Jersey who, you know, just keeps telling me to get to the point. And then he buys, you know, a, a $220 policy, but yeah. I had to wait till Friday to yeah. get to him. Yeah. But we spent an entire day just sorting leads. Yeah. Yeah. And so now we just have to say, just, it's just a name and a number. First person you see, pick up the phone and dial. Well, and what I find just Good. in, from the marketing perspective, I don't even know if I need to say this anymore. I've said it so many times. I'm not a licensed agent. I'm the marketing guy. So I just kind of speak to it from a marketing perspective. But I feel like what happens in this industry is that because of that reality, that is the case of there must be a better way. Mm. That's why lead vendors are like kind of like, I don't know, attacked or looked at as like, you know, you know, not not the best of group of individuals because it's like, well, your leads aren't good. I'm going to go over there. Well, your leads aren't good. I'm going to go over there. Well, direct mail's dead. I'm going to do this. And it's like, no, no, no. It's all, it's names and numbers. There's all kinds of ways to win. You know what I'm saying? There's referrals also. It's not the digital's better than direct mail or direct mail's dead. And it's not about this whole wrestling match. It's just really, it's block and tackle. And let's try it all and let's work it all and let's have a good attitude. And yeah, we might find the honey hole on one little deal, but it's probably going to dry up next month anyways. So let's not try and like throw all eggs in that honey hole. You know, it's like fishing, you know, just because you use this lure to catch this type of fish on this day, do the same thing over and over again, you're going to catch the same fish, the same size of fish. You got to switch it up. It's just part of it, you know? And if you're not trying different things and 
I always think of like the Raptors in Jurassic Park. You know, they test the fence, you know, and all of a sudden they got through the fence because they tested it. That's, you know, that's marketing. You know, you got to kind of like figure it out and then you get through it and then all of a sudden you're, you know, you're through it. But then there's another fence. I like Jurassic Park. I love that movie. So they say they're like five years away from it now. You saw that? No way. From what? Making a dinosaur. No way. Dude. Complete tangents. But anyways. I'll, I'll tour the island. Yeah. I'll be the dude that just does it. Just all, wow. the, all the carriers have to add a new uh, disclaimer. You know, this doesn't cover you. Death by dinosaur. So I love the Jurassic Park movies too. <laughs> Cody, we got we got our friend James. You know your audience better than anybody in this room. What does your audience want to hear from this guy? He's a bottomless well of wisdom. Hmm. I would. Uh, you know what? I'm here to learn from you, by the way. So <laughs> boom. I, I like the uh, CT. Would like the boom. I like, I, I really think that uh, we've talked a lot about telesales lately. I really think instead, I think we should talk about like the structure of a week and how to be consistent and how to go, ma- how to go earn, you know, five grand this week, you know, and kind of like what that looks like. Cause you, you use the word system a lot, you know, and, and a lot of y'all's production comes from field agents that are successful and consistent. You guys do something that's a little more unique um, on Fridays that I've never pers- personally done just because I thought, well, you know, they, they may not, they may forget about the appointment, you know, but kind of walk us what, through what you guys do on Fridays because I think it's super unique. Yeah, so, and, and this was a, a shift we had where you talk about, um, and I need this a lot, right? So, so it, it works in the call center and even more so in the field. People need structure and they need accountability. Mm. Um, you talked on on one of your podcasts, and I, I listened to a lot of them, so I forget. But you were talking about the different personality traits, and you know, a yeah, lot yeah. of a the lot disc of, assessment, yeah, all that. And yeah. um, I got to do that with uh, Matt Monero and Coach Burt, and it was really cool to see, you know, the the puzzle pieces and how that fits. But you know, if my wife was watching, she you know would jump through the the screen there. I am not organized. I'm not clean. I'm not organized. Like that's just not my, my strong suit. And so structure and, and all that accountability and stuff was something that Rory provided for us and provides for, you know, the field agents. And so they, they tweaked the system a little bit to where you would think it would be counterintuitive to take the entire sales force out of the field for an entire day. Hmm. Um, you know, when, when people just think about numbers and numbers and numbers, it's like, okay, they need to be selling every single day. And a lot again, of places say that they don't like like incentive trips and stuff because of that kind of stuff. Right. And so to see the, the wisdom of, um, you know, him and, and, uh, one of our, uh, our current president of sales who, who came in and, and had a, a routine that was working for them. And so I think it was about eight years ago, they in, instilled a Friday meeting. And so every Friday there are very little sales made um, in in the field side. Um, Some people have follow-ups and appointments and referrals, but they spend all day um, going through, setting appointments, getting organized, getting their mind right, getting getting retrained right. It can be lonely out there in the field. We Mm -hmm. talked a lot about the the family atmosphere of the call center, right? You need people to pick you up and, and you need to remind yourself that there are other people doing, you know, being successful. And even though we're a large outfit, if you're you know, if you work in Springfield, let's say for for uh, for us, and you might be an hour from the next closest agent, so you're having a rough week and all that. So to be able to go to a centralized location, spend an entire day with family, you know, you break bread together, you do all this, you do a little bit of training, and then we have a a, a call session, we set appointments, and we spend all day dialing, you know, so, um, you know, a lot of lessons, you know, from the call center get, get shifted over there, but then setting up their entire week. How many? Cause this is this, 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 I loved cause most people think too small. This was good. Um, so it depends what your goals are, but you know, the, the minimum we, we always encourage everybody to do, you're talking about how many calls to make or uh, appointments. appointments. It was the whole, whole four times seven. Yeah. So they do seven, 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 seven. So seven appointments, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 28 total right. set appointments. And then you're obviously still leaving room, like we talked about, for some referrals and, and stuff in there. Yep. Um, and then anybody that's in a Friday meeting that's getting leads, if somebody's super interested or they're trying to go for that record, they also you know schedule you know, a couple on Saturday or the whole weekend or, or anything like that. So, Gosh, I freaking love that. Because who, what agent, 
can't make money with 28 set appointments. And, and we take all the, like we said, all the back office stuff out of that. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's taboo to say this, but I mean, we don't, char- we don't charge agents for leads, yeah. you know, so, so it's a, a, a free lead system. And there's a whole lead department dedicated to, for, for field agents, making sure that everything that you're getting is within a, a tight territory, similar to what, what you guys yeah. spend a lot of time doing here. And so then Thursday night, boom, they get hit with all these leads in the area that they're gonna be working so that they can wake up Friday and then they're just ready to go and hit that. They don't have to spend any time sorting or organizing or going to pick up you know, uh, uh, their bulk mail stuff or anything like that. And so it's just that routine that happens. And every single Friday that happens like mm. clockwork. Um, and when that was instilled, you can look back in time and see the numbers when everybody was working five days a week or, or the weekends um, to when they went down to four and the PPA went up because you weren't spending so much time, you know, too many people just get up Monday, all right, I'm gonna go out there and do it, and I got one guy I'm gonna go see, and then you go see him, and then it's like, okay, now what do I do the rest of the day? And then you're sitting in your car 45 minutes from home trying to dial in the car car to figure out where you're going next, or you start the door knocking. So pushing that structure and having the accountability of all being in the room to do it. You know, we could do it from home, but we have everybody, encourage everybody to come to a a hotel room, conference rooms. It's easier to get more, it's easier to get more out of them. It's more fun. You guys are, you know, probably giving stuff away like you already do at your office. You know, it's just, it's a neat deal. It's and it's more efficient, you know, right. than, than not knowing what to do. You know, and there's, it's overwhelming sometimes and stressful to some agents where it's like, okay, it's Monday night. I have not made any sales. I need to set up some appointments. And but crap, I've got to go to a birthday party tomorrow and a doctor's appointment and my kid. And then it's it's Wednesday and morning and oh my gosh, I haven't made any sales this week. You know. I can't take time to make appointments because I need to go sell and you know, you get, it can be, you know, cyclical. And that's why I said, there's a lot more correlations between, you know, field sales and and telesales and people give it credit. I mean, we're really doing the the same thing at the end of the day. It's just the the vehicle that you're doing it. But I think it's so much about that's the same reason the call session happens in a big group because when everybody's sitting in the room doing that, there's just that energy, right? You start to get that low, dull roar of everybody's on the phone and everybody's talking and, and you know you're tally marking and every time you get one and it becomes a competition and you're enjoying that and you get to go eat with with people that are your family just like we do in, in the call center and that's why we encourage people not to set appointments from home and you know we don't um, have you know any sales reps that are selling over the phone from home so is there of the on are all 28 of those appointments typically set on that friday Depends on the individual, right? So we, we talk a lot about, you know, referrals. There are a lot of people that will come into Friday with Monday and Tuesday already booked. Okay. So because you're, they, they've yeah. already had people that's like, well, you know, I'm not home right now. And okay, then, and so they, they're pre-setting their, their next week. Um, and there's so much psychology to it, right? Because you don't want to sit there and, and book appointments till nine o'clock at night. So if you know that that's your routine, if you know that's what you're doing, you're going to be more conscious as you're working through the week of trying to make sure you're you're staying ahead of the game for for the next week, you hmm. know, and, and coming in saying, "Hey, I already got money taken care of." Um, but yeah, if you're a brand new agent and you're coming in there, fr- the goal Friday is to is to set Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Twenty eight in a day, and how many dials does that take? Uh, I- ironically, we've we've had a lot of people doing what we were talking about with the sales mm-hmm. team. So, um, you know, we have a, uh, hopefully your audience isn't too young. I, I, in our call center, we do a, a TPS report, which is what we created, which is a, a shout out to <laughs> Office Space. That's one of awesome. Favorite movies. And, uh, <laughs> Me too. So, you know, we do that. How many dials do you make? How many people? And, it, and it's, again, the competitive nature, it, it breaks it up and, and you can track your progress. And, you know, I encourage everybody to always know how much do they make for every dial and, and every presentation and every appointment. Because mm-hmm. um, whether you get a no or a yes, you're still making money. Yep. And so the correlation we made, you know, the 140 dials I was talking about are, we've had a lot of agents sending in pictures of that. And it's, it's about the same. So you're calling, you know, between a hundred and, and, you know, maybe a, 180 somewhere in there um, right on. To, to do that. Sheesh. That's not bad though. Really. You think about it. Well, I can pick up the phone 140 times and my whole week is booked and I'm probably going to make, I'm probably going to sit with 14 to 20 of those people. And I'm probably going to sell, you know, 
seven to ten policies. Like, that's amazing. Think about the amount of money from that, you know. And and then that's that's back to the the system. Like we said, there, if yep. you just have a system, then you'll avoid being in the percentage that fail. There's more to it too, too, because because it's like okay, the more I'm appointments I'm running, the better I am. The more in the zone I am, it's like a basketball player not putting up shots three days in a row. You know, you know, it's just, it, you know, you're, you're hitting on all cylinders. The more, the busier I am, the better I am. I just know that, you know. So it's just like there's a lot to that. You and know? I feel and like you right. create habits, right? Isn't totally. That, you know what I mean? Like you do the same thing over and over again. I don't know if you guys are like this, but it, there's some days where I'm like making decisions and I'm actually being lazy. I know it. I can oh, feel yeah. it. And I, do you guys get that s- stomach feeling? Where you like you, you can't put your finger on it, but you're like, I'm like not working hard today. Like I what is or something yeah, like you know that. what I mean. Like and I, I like and I feel like that comes from operating at a high level, and then then you become so comfortable at that high high level operation that all of a sudden you're not operating there, and you're almost I'm like sick to my stomach, like something's wrong. And really, I think it's because I'm like calling myself out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I really feel that. Totally. You know what I mean? Like I was I was you know you you you've commented on me being off for a couple of days. And so I was like, you know what? I didn't even thought about it. Let's, let's think about it. Well, I'd been doing so much like work and stuff. I hadn't really gotten in as many conversations with sales potential opportunities. And before you know it, I'm like. Well, and that always sparks you and excites you. Yeah, well, and I'm like, like. Keeps you moving. Yeah, I'm like, geez, I've been just making excuses and not work, I think. You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I doing? You know, like there's yeah. a lot of this work I could have been doing in the evening. What the heck was I thinking? You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's, that's, I think, the most benefit is that you, you, you create this habit of high excellence and activity and then when you're not there you're uncomfortable which is really kind of a gift from god it's good you know what i'm saying like that is like you can find yourself there man when are you not you know it's like there's some people that'll say everything you touch turns to gold or or why is it that you seem to always be successful it's like well maybe i just kind of know what kind of activity i need maybe it's deep down ingrained in me because i know the habits that it takes to be successful and i'm not doing them right now and i'm and it hurts my it makes me feel sick when I'm not doing it. Are you guys like that? I'm totally like that. Yeah, and, and um, Grant every Monday preaches this, and, and Coach Burt says the same thing. But you know, we've adopted this expression of the long obedience in the same direction, right? So it's that concept of just doing the same thing over and over and over again with the same intent. And you made the comment, and, and this is one Grant uses all the time in our uh, Monday kick is, you know, Kobe Bryant couldn't score 50 points taking three shots, yeah. right? And so it's like, in order to score 50 points, you gotta take a lot of shots. And when you're a shooter, you know, or when you're like, and when you have those appointments booked or when you have that accountability on a daily basis making the calls, everybody, you know, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, Kobe or LeBron or Jordan or, or whoever you're talking about would hit these ridiculous slumps. Right and in these slumps, what do they? What does a shooter always do in a slump? Stop shooting. No. The, oh, you're the saying best a shooters good, a good shoot shooter their, shoot their way out of their. You shoot got out it, of it. Got it. Got it. Right. You don't just see like Kobe or LeBron stand on the side like, no man, yeah. don't pass me oh, the ball. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I ain't yeah. got it today. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's like they know their numbers. Right. And and so you'll see somebody have a, a 22% field goal percentage for one game, but over the course of the season, their field goal percentage is almost always going to be the same and any of the greatest, you just see that slight improvement as they continue to yep. work on it, right? Yep. Yep. And so it's you know, that mentality, you know, of, of you know, I, I, that's I think why why we've been successful is, you know, something you guys triggered me to say is you made a comment to him, like, hey, you seem a little bit off, and <laughs> but it, it helps, and so yeah. like you got to have those friendships. Like Grant and I are very good at, you know, point counterpoint and being able to, you know, he can come to me and say like kind of being a jerk today yeah you know like <laughs> what's going on you know that's another reason why we're a lot alike i've told you this yeah man. and uh yeah. like yeah you're right I, I didn't sleep well this happened this i'm overly caffeinated like, numbers are down <laughs> this and that and so like he has to like talk me off the ledge and like get me out of that and um that's funny and you know so so that helps and just like we said when you know your numbers the tps report you know it doesn't matter because i can track everything and whether it's seven 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 or you know or 140 dollars you can always you know shoot your way out of a slump or understand that hey i'm on a hot streak and you know i gotta stay consistent so i love that this has been good man this has been really good is there anything you're gonna regret not saying to our audience 
I hope not. But I think of it, I'll come back. There we go. We'll have You're you welcome. back, bro. We'll have, we'll have him back, right? It's been awesome, man. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Good to have you here. Dude, yeah, good. Make, well, thanks for making the trip. Um, man, dude, I appreciate you taking the time. Guys, hope you found some value with James. Um, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to join us for a little while. This is a long podcast, Dylan. So, all right, thanks for joining us. Have a good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.